Okay, in this video, I'd like to talk about electromagnetic waves. This is aimed at somebody who is doing a course in optics in, in, in college, and uh, it's, it's, you know, it, uh, it's, I'm going to talk about how we derive a wave equation and so on. It's going to be pretty basic, okay? This is, this is kind of the fundamentals. But I would like for you to watch my video on wave-particle duality. And I know that video is quite long, but it will give you a good insight into what, how we model light. Or you might even watch my video on scientific models. Scientific models. Okay? Now, in this particular video, I'm only going to be talking about the wave model of light. Alright? So, the first thing I'd like to say is, if you look at those videos, you'll understand that we, we describe light as, we can describe light as moving as a wave. Just like the waves on a string, or the waves in the sea. However, these ones don't need a medium, or um, they don't need something to move through. They can just move through empty space. And if you wanted, we always want to describe things mathematically when we're using physics. So, tr can we think of a function which constantly repeats itself over and over and over again? And the answer is we can. We know that sines and cosines do that. So you should think it reasonable that when describing electromagnetic waves, or light waves, that we use sines and cosines, because they constantly repeat themselves, just like the light waves do. And we use the Greek letter psi to, to, uh, to illustrate, or to, to, to represent a wave. And because a wave can be somewhere in space, we should know that, the, we should think it reasonable that the wave depends on its position, and it depends on its time. Of course, we can generalize this and talk about it in three dimensions, but that's more difficult, so I'm only going to talk about the, uh, the, the, one dimension, the one spatial dimensional case. So, T time for temporal, temporal dimension, and um, uh, X for spatial dimension. Alright? So, that's, that's, yeah, that's all I've got to say about that particular thing. So, um, how about we work out, uh, how, to, how do we find out its position? Alright? Now, the other thing as well is that, um, that I, know, I won't mention that now. All right. So I'm going to suggest to you that the uh, a wave looks something like this. Uh, psi is equal to a times. That's just the constant that gives kind of the amplitude of your wave times the sine of k x um, plus or minus v t. And you might say to yourself, "Oh, where did that come out of?" And I'll tell you. Well, a is just remember sine is between zero and one. So if you multiply it by a number, you can get you can get any number you want. So that's how you get the amplitude of your wave. Now, when people were dis were uh, analyzing electromagnetic waves or sound waves, they found that a particular number kept popping up, two pi over lambda, and they called that k, which we call the wave number. And that was great. It was probably initially used first because they didn't want to write two pi over lambda. But they found since that it has a physical meaning, and the physical meaning is it gives you the direction of movement or direction of propagation of your wave. So we know, for example, that electric and magnetic waves are perpendicular, something you should... Uh, I have, I've spoken about in other videos, but anyway, we know they're perpendicular. So the, the, the wave number, k, is perpendicular to both of those and gives you the direction of propagation of your wave. Okay, and it is a vector. But in one dimension, we just call it 2 pi over lambda, which is just uh, just one particular dimension, a number. So like I said, your wave number is there. And you don't need to worry about why it's there. Just just know that this thing was seen to need to, need to be there, and it actually has a physical meaning because it gives its position. Or it gives you, sorry, the direction of movement. And I told you that, it's a, that our wave equation is a function of position and a function of time. So how do we, how do we go ahead and uh, how, how does that make sense? Well, think about it. If you have a wave that's here, there's your wave, well then, say that's position x, then psi is equal to a times the sine of, of kx, we'll say. Like that. So we know it's position and that's all. But what if it's moving? How do we work out if it's, wh wh how it's, uh, where it is if it's moving? Okay, so let's go ahead and work that out. So say if I say I'm in, in, if you're standing at one particular point, you're in a frame of reference called S, and say one person is standing here, right? There's a person standing there. And how about if the wave moves, so the wave is after moving, and say the wave, say there's another person there, okay? Say there's another particular individual there, and he can think, he can, he has his own frame of reference, so he calls it S prime. So how far is the the wave after moving. Well, we know that distance 
is equal to speed times time. And we know the, the velocity of the wave, we'll say, is v, and the, its time is t. So we know that that is equal to a distance. So we can say, for example, that, and bear with me while I write this, we can say that the distance between the waves is vt. That's vt. All right? Furthermore, we can say that this distance here is, we'll say we call that x. And what, how far is it now? It might be another x prime. So if you look at it, you'll say that x prime is equal to x. Or uh, we'll say, no, I'll do that, that's incorrect. That is incorrect. One second, x prime. Oh, I take that back. That's, that's x prime. And this is x. Sorry, I take that back. Take that back. That's that's a silly thing to write. So we'll say that the um, we'll say that in the frame of reference of the the new wave, he considers this his position to be x. But in in the old frame, he considers himself to be at x prime. Well, he considers that to be a distance x prime. So how do you work out the distance here in terms of the person that's there? So we'll say that x prime is equal to um, or we'll say x, excuse me, is equal to x prime minus vt. All right, I think I got a bit, I got confused there a small bit myself. So just to say it once more, that your wave is here initially, and this person considers uh, the wave to be there. That's fine. Then the wave moves away, and now its position can be thought of uh, relative to this person or this person. And the two, the distances are there. So in this person, you might think the distance that the wave is from him is x, whereas this person thinks the wave is x prime away. And the wave or the distance between the two frames is the distance of the, the is the, the speed of the wave times the, dis, the times the time. And we'll say if you take one from the other to get the distance travelled. Okay, and look, x minus vt. X minus vt. Now obviously if the wave is going in the opposite direction, you get the x plus vt. So if it's going to the right, we get x minus vt, and if it's going to the left, we get x plus vt. Okay? So look, don't be, don't don't worry about where the plus came from. Just if you can understand or convince yourself that it's x minus vt for a wave going this direction, then it's just x plus vt going this direction. Okay? So we can rewrite that equation if we like. We can say that psi is equal to a times the sine of kx plus or minus k times vt. There's one more thing I'd like to do and make one more substitution. Now, it's going to involve a small, bit of a, uh, a small bit of thinking, first of all. So say, for example, you have a wheel, or it will, you have a handle, a big fat handle, which can move around. Okay, it can just move around. And underneath it, you have a piece of paper. And the piece of paper can move. All right? And the piece of paper can move. And say you shine a light down on top of it. So what, 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 as a result, on the piece of paper, you would see a shadow where the... Where the uh, you'd see a shadow where the handle is, but say if I move the piece of paper along, and I can and I if I move the piece piece of paper along and I move my uh, shadow to here, or we'll say yeah to there. Now on the piece of paper because it's moved I'll have a I'll have a, a, a shadow there, and if I continue moving the paper and moving around my shadow it's going to be here, and then it will go to here, go down to there, and then it will go to here up to there. Okay, now of course if this is all happening in one go, then you'd have a wave. You'd have something like this. So you can, you should be able to con convince yourself now that motion in a circle can give you motion on a wave. Alright? And we know, or we should know at least from classical mechanics, that the angular velocity, omega, is equal to 2 pi times the, we'll say, the, or the angular frequency is equal to 2 pi times the frequency. 2 pi relating to a circle, of course. So, what happens? Uh, how do we how do we get that into into our um, into our equation? Right, we get that get it into our equation by doing something. Just let me think now. Um, okay, how about this? C is equal to f lambda, but if you're not moving at the speed of light, v is equal to f lambda. All right, but we know that. Uh, that we know that k is equal to 2 pi over lambda. So we can say f, it's equal to f times, um, it's equal to f times 
2 pi over k, like that. So okay. Now how do we get omega into this? We saw a moment ago that omega is equal to 2 pi times f. Therefore, v is equal to um, v is equal to omega over 2 pi times 2 pi over k is equal to omega over k. So your velocity is equal to your angular frequency divided by your wave number. Right, that's a that's a manipulation which you should be able to do. You, you definitely need to know all the, all the different pieces of this and all the uh, the the um, the formula. So let's let's apply this up to here. We know that v is equal to omega over k. So sine now become or sine now becomes a times the sine of kx plus or minus k times omega over k times t. Therefore, psi is equal to a times the sine of kx plus or minus omega times t. And that's probably the form you usually see the wave equation written. Alright, so um, I think that's all I want to say about that. Just bear with me for one moment. Yeah, I think that's all I want to say about that. So thanks for watching. Please pass it on to your friends and subscribe to my channel.